Exact Track 4D detects dangerous weather days ahead of time so you can make the right plans for your family. All right, if you're just joining us, it is now a hurricane. Talking about Debbie here moving up five miles per hour from what was 70 to 75, and will continue to make landfall here in and around the Taylor County area of the Big Bend. And here's where we could see the wind anywhere between about 85 up to 90 miles per hour. And we're still talking tropical storm here as it continues inland. There's Tuesday evening, so keep that in mind. This is Monday, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Mark and I are going to do the handshake and the handoff here at around 2 a.m. And then he'll get ramped up and be joining the team starting at 434 tomorrow as they'll be tracking at 8 o'clock, making landfall here into the Big Bend region. Here we are at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and then we get to the uh, two, uh, the uh, um, 8 a.m. update, and then this is the 8 p.m. as it finally starts to move offshore. So we're talking about the entirety of our Monday, even some of Tuesday as we're still tracking the wet weather. Earlier, we were tracking some tornadic activity here. We had a handful of tornado warnings. They started here around parts of Alachua, went to Bradford, then into Union County, and then the one that actually was from about uh, 7... 40, or 758, 759 or so, all the way up through about uh, six, seven minutes after eight o'clock is the last blast that we were watching in the area that actually had a couplet at one point and then back to straight line signature, back to a couplet. That's what we tracked here all the way up through Murtis, Ebenezer, and continued near 4, 441. And we've had some uh, confirmation from both emergency management as well as train spotters that saw one of them actually crossed over I-75 and the other was closer to the air park there at US 90. Almost eight inches in climbing here as we take you over to areas from Sarasota upward through Tampa St. Pete and that's the purple streaks that you see and locally we were just talking about some of the rainfall totals here and if I haven't been talking a lot about your county it's because nothing has really started to occur a court nothing has started that's going to lead us over to that part of the conversation like when we were tracking the tornadoes. Here's where the heaviest rain has since settled in. You can see from Brunswick to Kingsland, Callahan, and even into areas around Jacksonville. I mean, we're talking a quarter inch to less than an inch across Nassau County, Camden and Glen, and much of southeast Georgia where the activity will be moving through tomorrow evening, uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, and continuing through Tuesday. And it's the power outages that we're watching. So I do have the maps pulled up here and you're seeing some sporadic activity along the Big Bend region and even down into Tampa St. Pete. Tornado watch is going to continue overnight tonight and into 6 a.m. And it's likely that then it'll be updated again from 6 o'clock to continue throughout the afternoon. And where we had tropical storm watches, they are now warnings and our hurricane warnings. Now that we've got the hurricane that continues offshore, we've had those as they continue off to the west. And that is where we're seeing currently the biggest slug here of our wet weather. And what we see right now is just about as far as we can reach with our jacks radar. Next big part of the puzzle here is how much of the rain comes through. We've got the hurricane, but that forward speed's not impressive, but the rainfall here as it continues to slow down over land and weakens to a tropical storm could equate easily to flash flooding. Also along our area rivers, they've already started to come up and it does look like those will hit flood stage, whether it's the St. Mary, uh, the Santa Fe River, or any of the rivers that continue here across areas of Southeast Georgia. Once this moves offshore, and this is based on the Euro, this is showing that it moves moves into uh, areas of the Carolinas. Now here's where it gets scary. If the GFS and the other models start to flip this direction, what we see here is it moves out over the Atlantic, turns back around again. Folks, 20 inches, 20 inches, 20 inches. If we see those kind of amounts, that is not only historic, not only record setting, but potentially catastrophic here of what could occur. So these are the two big models we are seeing from the Weather Prediction Center, sort of a blend, if you will between the two in this area of lighter purple, which takes us beyond the 10 inch point here, has continued to broaden, especially in areas of Southeast Georgia. Folks, tomorrow, that's going to be a lot of our focus here as the system starts to move into Georgia. Yes, we're gonna be covering Northeast Florida, but we're really gonna be watching and letting folks know as these rainfall rates continue to increase, even across areas of Duval, Nassau County, where we're expecting what could be five, eight inches of rain, we're going to be watching that as well. 
well. With the wind load coming through, we still have the rotation and we still have what will be the veering winds with heights. So this could increase this could continue our tornado watch as we move through. Notice that the Euro see how light the winds get as it kind of shows the center crossing over Waycross and then it picks up again as it continues to move offshore and then out over the open water. That's just the one view here. And then we get into the Euro and it's the same idea passing through also comes through with what could be stronger wind gust in the say 30, 40, even as high as the 50 mile an hour range before this thing gets to the Atlantic and does the same thing, does that little turnaround and comes back toward us. So from there and into clickety click, let's head on over to the rest of my forecast overnight tonight, just about the time we'll be doing the handoff. Temperatures are in the lower 80s right now. They'll bottom around the upper 70s and 80s. Rain continues overnight tonight. Um, I would have, if you have your weather authority phone and or weather authority app on your tablet, your phone or whatever, make sure that's somewhere nearby, coffee stand or whatever, uh, nightstand and or if you don't have that and you have our, uh, you have the uh, NOAA weather radio, those are great ideas to have overnight tonight in the event that some of those tornado warnings are popping up in your, in your neighborhood. That'll help to get you up and out of bed and at least get you into a safe spot if those are popping up overnight tonight. Tuesday, we continue with the wet weather and the questions that you see here in that seven-day forecast, which model's more accurate and do we start to dry out sooner or later?